Welcome to Mastering Solutions. We're going to be going through another momentum problem here. And with this, I want to draw a picture first because I feel like the way they worded the question is really confusing just to try to understand the concept even, and it, it definitely helps out. So what we have is we have a guy climbing on a rock here, right? And they say that right here, we're gonna call this time zero, he falls down and then this is where it's kind of confusing. They say a 2.5 meter long rope caught the person, but the 2.5 doesn't really matter to anything in the problem. All that matters is that right here at time one, they get caught by the rope and then the rope stretches at time two where they stop We're down here hanging on the rope. And they want to know that if the net force has to be kept below 11 kilonewtons, what is the minimum time for the mass to come to rest? So they want to know how long is it going to take for that rope to stretch to catch them. So now that we kind of understand what's going on, let's write the variables that they give us in the problem. So we know that the mass of the person is 80 kilograms. The change in the y direction is a negative 4.8 meters. The rope, like we already talked about, is 2.5 meters long. And then the force has to be less than 11 kilonewtons, which is the same as 11,000 newtons, or another way of writing it is 11 times 10 to the three Newton. And of course, they want to know what is the change in time from point one to point two. So delta T question mark. If we write the formula for impulse, we have J is equal to the average force times the change in time, which is also equal to the change in momentum. We're going to be using these two right here together to solve this problem. So if we isolate T by dividing the average force on both sides of the equation, we have delta T is equal to the change in momentum divided by the average force. We can simplify that a little bit more. Delta T is equal to P final minus P initial divided by force average. Now let's keep going. Delta T is equal to mv final minus mv initial all over the average force. If we look at this, the final velocity of the person is actually zero. So this will go away. So delta t is equal to a negative mv initial all over final. Now the problem with this is we don't know what the initial velocity is at point one. So this is a challenging question because it's a two-step problem. So now what we have to do is we have to find the initial velocity and we actually have to go back and use kinematic equations to find that. So we're going to use velocity initial squared is equal to velocity final squared, which we, as we just talked about, we know is zero, so that can go away, plus two a delta y. We isolate v initial. We square root both sides. So v initial is equal to the square root of 2 times the acceleration times the change in the y direction. And now this whole unit, we're actually going to, because with the square root, obviously, as you know, you can take the plus or the minus from it. We're actually going to be taking the minus of the square root because we're going in the negative y direction. So now when we plug in our variables here, we have the square root of two times the acceleration, which is 9.8 meters per second squared times, that's a negative of course, times a negative 4.8 meters, which is a change in the y direction. We square root all of that and we'll be taking the minus. So we have negative square root of two times negative 9.8 times a negative 4.8 gives us a negative 9.7 meters per second for our initial velocity. 
So now that we have the initial velocity, we can just plug in everything into our equation that we already solved for down here. So now the change in time is going to be equal to, as we discussed already, the negative mass, which is 80 kilograms, times a negative 9.7 meters per second. So now we're going to divide both of those by the average force, as we discussed, which is 11 times 10 to the third newtons. Negative 80 times a negative 9.7. And divide all of that by 11 times 10 to the third newtons. And we get 0 0.071. So now hold on before you click away because I want to point out a potential problem here. I've gone through and triple checked this question, and this is the correct answer here, 0 0.071 seconds. However, in mastering physics, they say that the correct answer is 0 0.71 seconds. I've gone through and calculated it out, and I've done exactly what they do as well in the problem, and I get 0 0.071 every single time. I just think they had a typo in this problem. I just wanted to make you aware of that, that if you have a problem, this may be why. But the answer to the question is 0.071 seconds for how long it takes the rope to catch the person.